My religion consists of a humble admiration of the illimitable superior spirit who reveals himself in the slight details we are able to perceive with our frail and feeble mind. I believe in intuitions and inspirations, I sometimes feel that I am right. I do not know that I am. If at first the idea is not absurd, then there is no hope for it. The most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and all science. He to whom this emotion is a stranger, who can no longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe, is as good as dead. His eyes are closed. Life is a preparation for the future, and the best preparation for the future is to live as if there were none. The revolution introduced me to art, and in turn, art introduced me to the revolution. The most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. He to whom the emotion is a stranger, who can no longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe, is as good as dead his eyes are closed. The insight into the mystery of life, coupled though it be with fear, has also given rise to religion. To know what is impenetrable to us really exists, manifesting itself as the highest wisdom and the most radiant beauty, which our dull faculties can comprehend only in their most primitive forms, this knowledge, this feeling is at the center of true religiousness. I cannot imagine a God who rewards and punishes the objects of his creation, whose purposes are modeled after our own, a God, in short, who is but a reflection of human frailty. Neither can I believe that the individual survives the death of his body, although feeble souls harbor such thoughts through fear or ridiculous egotisms. When I examine myself and my methods of thought, I come to the conclusion that the gift of fantasy has meant more to me than any talent for abstract, positive thinking. He who joyfully marches to music rank and file has already earned my contempt. He has been given a large brain by mistake, since for him the spinal cord would surely suffice. This disgrace to civilization should be done away with at once. Heroism at command, senseless brutality, deplorable love of country stance and all the loathsome nonsense that goes by the name of patriotism. How violently I hate all this, how despicable and ignoble war is. I would rather be torn to shreds than be part of so base an action. It is my conviction that killing under the cloak of war is nothing but an act of murder. The only real valuable thing is intuition. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge but imagination. Your question is the most difficult in the world. It is not a question I can answer simply with yes or no. I am not an atheist. I do not know if I can define myself as a pantheist. The problem involved is too vast for our limited minds. May I not reply with a parable? The human mind, no matter how highly trained, cannot grasp the universe. We are in the position of a little child, entering a huge library whose walls are covered to the ceiling with books in many different tongues. 
The child knows that someone must have written those books. It does not know who or how. It does not understand the languages in which they are written. The child notes a definite plan in the arrangement of the books, a mysterious order, which it does not comprehend, but only dimly suspects. That, it seems to me, is the attitude of the human mind, even the greatest and most cultured, toward God. We see a universe marvelously arranged, obeying certain laws, but we understand the laws only dimly. Our limited minds cannot grasp the mysterious force that sways the constellations. I am fascinated by Spinoza's pantheism. I admire even more his contributions to modern thought. Spinoza is the greatest of modern philosophers, because he is the first philosopher who deals with the soul and the body as one, not as two separate things. It is my view that the vegetarian manner of living, by its purely physical effect on the human temperament, would most beneficially influence the lot of mankind. Laws alone cannot secure freedom of expression, in order that every man present his views without penalty there must be spirit of tolerance in the entire population. The tragedy of life is what dies inside a man while he lives. When the solution is simple, God is answering. A person starts to live when he can live outside himself. We cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. The only thing that interferes with my learning is my education. Somebody who only reads newspapers and at best books of contemporary authors looks to me like an extremely nearsighted person who scorns eyeglasses. He is completely dependent on the prejudices and fashions of his times, since he never gets to see or hear anything else. I want to know God's thoughts, the rest are mere details. Intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death. One thing I have learned in a long life, that all our science, measured against reality, is primitive and childlike, and yet it is the most precious thing we have. Information is not knowledge. The ideals which have always shone before me and filled me with joy are goodness, beauty, and truth. We know from daily life that we exist for other people first of all, for whose smiles and well-being our own happiness depends. If I were to remain silent, I'd be guilty of complicity. The more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be changed from one form to another. 